All right, while uh, we get all the AV stuff up and running, I'll just uh, introduce ourselves here. I'm Doug Rennert from Tandem. Uh, this is Nick Evans, who's co-founder and CEO of Tile. Hey everyone. One of, our, uh, one of Tandem's recent uh, portfolio companies. And we're going to change the format up here a little bit. Uh, we're going to talk about wearables, um, but a different type of wearable. We're going to talk about wearables for our stuff or our things, which is one of the areas that really excites us at Tandem. Tile was our, our first investment. So let's get things queued up here, and we'll jump in. Sure, if it's working, you want to test? Thank you. You want me to go back? Let's yeah, do why don't you just do it? Because sure. it's not. Uh... Oh, oh. Sorry? Pull up a slide. Pull up a slide? Oh, can you pull up the deck, please? I guess we're going back. OK, no problem. Great. There we are. All right, so again, <laughs> wearables for our stuff. Uh, for those of you who aren't familiar with Tandem, we're a seed fund and accelerator. We've been investing exclusively in uh, mobile-first startups for about six years now. We basically write the first two to $300,000 check for about 20 companies every year. Um, and we'll often invest millions more as a company starts to grow. But we'd never done a hardware investment over that entire history until about six months ago when we backed Tile, and I want to get into kind of why all that changed, for us at least. First of all, we were as excited as anybody about this uh, wearable space. I thought there were a lot of possibilities, but we wanted to think very hard about a few key challenges and how we could address those before we dived in. For one, we wanted to make sure whoever we backed actually had broad appeal across a mass audience and wasn't just something that was kind of appealing to the, uh, the gadget geek crowd, so to speak. Uh, secondly, we didn't want to be constrained by the uh, space on the human body. We felt that was a little too limiting. And third and probably most important, um, we wanted to limit the number of times somebody had to charge a, a piece of hardware. Every time you have to plug in, it's another uh, time when you wonder if it's worth it. And it's those points at which oftentimes these devices will find themselves stuck in the kitchen drawer, uh, never to emerge again. So it was back a while ago when Apple first adopted the Bluetooth Low Energy Protocol, B BLE also known as, um, into iOS that we first realized that all those challenges could be addressed head on. With BLE, a little piece of hardware could communicate with a smartphone using very low amounts of energy. We figured out, I've got a little battery here, you can probably not even see it, but a battery that's smaller than a nickel could uh, power a connected piece of hardware for over a year. You would never have to plug it in. That would have taken four AA batteries uh, in order to do the same thing with the original Bluetooth protocol. You could also, if you wanted to have a device that lasted for three or four years, just move up to something the size of a half dollar and very, very thin. So that, you had to kind of limit some of the functionality of the device, but it really, really opened up possibilities uh, around form factors and use cases that uh, got us thinking hard. The other very cool thing about BLE is now that it's used by all these smartphones out there and it's a standard, you can actually start building networks of millions of receivers out in the wild, and eventually even hundreds of millions of receivers. Basically, we're the receivers, you and I walking around with our smartphones. Um, that means that a connected piece of hardware doesn't have to be fixed, doesn't have to be tied to a single Wi-Fi network, or wait to 
sync back up with somebody's device. Basically, they can be out there free, um, connected all the time to a network that's less than 1% the cost of what a traditional cell network would, would, uh, would run. And so, with all these things in mind, the shrinking form factors, longer battery life, low-cost ubiquitous networks, our minds started running beyond you know, wearables, devices we put on ourselves, and into connected keys, wallets, toys, enterprise assets, you name it. Basically, this whole area of uh, wearables for our stuff. But as I mentioned, we, we didn't do anything ar around this until about six months ago when we found the right team and the right business, and that was Tile. So I'm going to turn it over to Nick now, and he'll tell a little bit about their story, which is a very fun one. So. Good. Thanks, Doug. Uh, again, I'm Nick Evans, CEO and co-founder of Tile. How is everyone doing? <laughs> good. Good. Thanks for having me up here. So. In Tile, we are building the world's largest lost and found. We are building a system to help you never lose anything again, and we're doing it with this, a small white square that you can attach to anything and then find that with your phone. Uh, has anybody heard of Tile? All right. <laughs> has anybody pre-ordered? All right. Where, there are more hands up before. You guys have heard of it. What happened? All right. Well, uh, many of you then have already seen the video. For those uh, who haven't, I'll show you it now. And for those who have, uh, here's another commercial for you guys. All the people out there that didn't pre-order, here you go. Do we have audio? Great. <laughs> to your laptop and worry less. Attach it to your keys and never be late. Drop it in your purse and you're good to go. It works very simply. Finding things with Tile is easy. Through the Tile app on your phone, you can track distance to your lost item. The app shows you as you get closer. And Tile has other features too. You can log into your Tile account on anyone's smartphone to search for your items. And you can also activate a Tile to ring so you can find it by sound. Tile is affordable, and it's tiny. You can even securely share tiles with others using our cloud-based platform, which is great for families. No matter who used the car last, the keys can always be found. If your bike goes missing, you can mark it as a lost item. This puts all other tile apps on the lookout for your tile. If any tile user gets within range of your bike, their phone will discreetly and securely communicate with our cloud system, and you'll be sent a notification of your bike's whereabouts. Let Tile find the small things, so you can find the big ones. Aww. <laughs> so about uh, a year ago, uh, my co-founder, Mike Farley, and I, we started working on this idea. We started putting together all the marketing, all the engineering, all the branding, everything uh, going into this to try and build something that we felt people really liked uh, in order to put this all on a crowdfunding campaign on Self Starter uh, to really find out if people did want this thing or not. And what did we find, find out? We found out that people like buying craft loads of tiles, fortunately, for us and for everyone. Um, we, we had a really good uh, self-starter campaign, most successful self-starter campaign ever. We sold $2.7 million in tiles in the first month. Uh, that was three months ago that we started, and since then, we've sold over 400,000 tiles. So that's uh, over 4,000 tiles every single day on average, and we're quite happy with that. Um, and we'd like to think that it was not just an accident, that there were certain things that we concentrated on to ensure the success of the campaign. And there are really three things that we, that we looked into that we felt were most important. Uh, and that was really to solve a simple problem, not look for a complicated problem, something really simple and provide a really simple solution. Uh, build something that was very easy to use. People have very little patience now. Uh, Apple and others have made things so easy to use and they've really upped the standard. And of course, beautiful design. 
as with something like this or any wearables. People want, we want them to integrate them into their daily lives. And to do that, to be able to ask them to do that, it has to be really beautiful and really elegant for them. And uh, I encourage you all to, uh, to look into Bluetooth Low Energy as we have with new problems and even with old problems. Uh, this opens up new possibilities, new opportunities for us. And uh, I encourage you to look into these three things. But Doug, you want to wrap it up? Sure. Uh, by the way, I don't, you probably noticed that last part of the video where the woman loses her bike and it connects back into the cloud and then everybody's essentially helping passively as part of the network. That's kind of what I was talking about in terms of some of the power that this BLE standard brings to the whole picture here. But anyway, I'll just quickly wrap up. Tile, as I mentioned, was our first uh, hardware investment at Tandem. It hasn't been our last. Uh, we're now in a few companies, Connected Toys, one area, smart appliances, even an enterprise tracking system. We're planning to do about one or two of these businesses a quarter now. So we're, we're pretty get, getting pretty actively engaged. If you happen to have uh, a cool idea or business you're working on, we'd love to, love to see it. So I'll be walking around the conference the rest of the day, and uh, I've also put our email contact information uh, on there. All right, look forward to hearing from some of you, and thanks so much for your time. Okay. All right.